In this lesson, I'm going to introduce you to some chemistry drawing software. It's called BioRad Know-It-All. It's free to students, that is for students in diploma granting schools. It's useful for drawing chemical structures, especially in organic chemistry. So to find this, simply Google search something like BioRad Know-It-All Free Academic and you see immediately I've found that. I notice this is the official website and I would click here but I've found that whether I click on BioRad's website or science solutions at johnwiley.com I come up to the same website which is right here. So it appears as if John Wiley has purchased Know-It-All. So this is free software for chemical structure drawing and analysis and more. Who is eligible? Students, etc. at degree granting institutions, but the software must be relicensed on an annual basis. No support is available. When you open the software, this is the default screen. There are one, two, three, four different applications within Know-It-All and there are applications within those applications. So it's a multi-function program. Many of these applications like Search It, Mine It, Mixture Analysis, Spectral Processing, Spectral Analysis, many of these are disabled or only barely functional in this freeware version. We'll be using the basic group here, specifically Chem Windows, Report It, 3D View It, and Simaps. So let's start in Chem Windows. So this is a canvas for drawing structures. There's a lot to tell you, but let me give you a general overview first. If you choose File, Page Setup, you have an option to choose Portrait or Landscape Layout and different sizes. I don't really understand the point of this because the canvas is absolutely huge as I'll show you in just a minute. You probably want to also make sure that all your toolbars are selected if you go under View and make sure that your toolbars are selected. By default all of these are. I notice Periodic Table isn't. If I select it, I see a periodic table clicking on an atom symbol gives me some information about the atom. In the left pane there are toolbars and I notice there are actually five sets of toolbars here. Main, Bonds, Atoms, Rings, and Edit. You can do most of your work using the main toolbar. If you need additional help you can find them specifically on these other toolbar groups. You can edit or customize any of these as well. I'll show you how to do that. So I have the main selected. I'll choose Edit, Customize, Chemistry Toolbar. So here are the five different tool groups. For example, on the main tool group, these are the tools currently in place. These on the right here are available. So let's choose one that I can easily spot when I add it. How about that? Spring to front. I simply have to say Add Selected Item to Group and now it appears in my main tool group. If I want to remove it, just select it and press delete. So you can customize each of these as you wish. If you choose File, Preferences, we have under Templates and Styles, we have the location where the files are saved. And under the Measurements tab, here we have the fixed angle. So when you draw a bond and want to rotate it, it'll rotate in increments of whatever you've set here, 15 degrees is default. A hitbox is a region around an atom which if you click on or drag from it makes sure that whatever you are attaching is actually attached. If you're outside the hitbox it won't physically connect it so uh, you can set the size of the hitbox here. We have the units for the ruler. You can choose from a variety of units. Uh, inches is the default and I'll leave it at that. And then we have the dialog units. Again, you can choose from a variety. The dialog units are, for example, the bond links. And that's often selected in points, but you can choose it as you wish. And then apply if you make a change. Next, choose either File, Edit Structure Style, or Edit, Edit Structure Style. It's the same 
dialog box. It's quite important. So when you're drawing structures, you can have default settings of line widths, bond lengths, double bond widths, and so on, all these different settings. And this is where you can make changes. Once you make a selection in this dialog box, everything you draw from this point forward will comply with these settings. But if there's a structure you have already drawn and you want to make a change to it, what you'll need to do is select that portion of the structure and then open this and change the setting and click Apply. Under the Fonts and Colors tab, you have options to choose the font type and size and the subscript size and offset for labels. Labels are the characters or letters that are used in structures and in formulas. And I don't honestly know what structure names applies to in Chem Window. If you do, perhaps you can let me know. Now these can also be set on the main screen afterwards. If you make a change, just click Apply and say OK. When you save a Chem Windows file, the settings will be saved with it. And the next time you open that file, those settings will be reset. Chem Windows files have a .dsf file extension. A couple more things here. Check out Chemistry Formula Calculator. You can type in the formula of any compound you wish, CH3COOH, acetic acid, and it tells you the molar mass. If you want to know the mass of, say, a lesser quantity or a different quantity, 0.2 moles, and it calculates that for you. This canvas is absolutely huge. I'm going to just draw a benzene ring just so we can look at something here. All right, so. Um, I've got my vertical um, slide bar such that it says zero inches is about here. And I have my horizontal slide bar so that zero is about here. So I'm somewhere in the middle of the canvas. I can scroll out by holding the control key down and rolling the mouse button down. And it gets, look how big this is. It's ginormous. I can zoom in by, of course, scrolling up. Now, how big is this canvas? I scrolled out as far as I can. If I look at the top, I'm at 192 inches above the zero. That's 16 feet. I'll come down. I'll notice the left-hand ruler. I come down to about zero, and I'll keep going down. to 196 again. So I actually have 32 feet of vertical height on this canvas. See if I can find the middle again. All right, how about horizontally? I go to the far left, and I'm at 192 again, which is 16 feet. I go to the right. Here's my zero marks at 16 feet from here to the left-hand side, and I have another another 196 so it's about 16 feet again 32 by 32 is this canvas size it's so easy to get lost in here or draw something and can't find it if you select the structure choose the selection tool and drag a box around it these hit boxes are visible now you can choose any of these uh, magnification tools for example uh, this is increase each time you Oh, see, it disappeared on me. Well, let's make it smaller. All right, so you can move it. And we'll try magnifying again. That's going the other way. You can choose a one-to-one -one size. Let's see, this, don't know what it is, doesn't say, but it magnifies uh, fully. Back to one-to-one. -to -one. This tool allows you to zoom whatever you select, like so. So these are quite useful. You can also change magnification size here. I find this canvas is awkward to use, uh, easy to get lost in, but I guess it just takes practice. Typing chemical formulas in Chem Windows is really easy. 
For example, I'm going to show you how we type this chemical formula. Simply choose the label tool here, the O with the bonds coming out of it. Click the canvas and just start typing. I'm not using any special characters. I'm not trying to subscript or superscript. Chem window seems to know just when. Yeah, so as you type, it automatically subscripts and superscripts as required. And that's because by default it's in the formula mode, CH2 indicator here. You could at any time select any given character and change its capitalization or subscripting as you wish, but in the formula mode it's very easy to do. All right, so let's get started drawing some structures. I'm just going to move this out of the way. All right, select the label tool, click on the canvas, and let's start with typing a capital C. Then select the standard bond tool here. We're going to drag a bond from it. Now you have to make sure that before you drag a bond, the hit box is selected. If it's not selected, your bond will not be connected to the atom. So just dragging outwards. Notice these are the 15 degree angle presets we described before. I'd like to make this bond length longer for all subsequent structures. So I'm going to do that by going to the edit, edit structure style. Notice the bond length is set to 20. Let's make it 30 and say apply and OK. I'm going to delete this bond and I'll draw a new one. It should be. So it seems that using the erase tool got rid of not only the bond but the carbon. That's pathetic. Let's try it again. Capital C. Our bond should be longer this time and it is. And I found that if I you do control Z, it'll undo the bond without actually deleting the carbon atom in the event that you wanted to change it. All right, so there's a carbon. And we want to make this a double bond, so hover your cursor somewhere over the center of the bond itself and click and you get a double bond. If you click again, you get a double bond that's higher and a double bond lower and eventually you get a triple bond and just keep clicking and come back to a single bond. But I'm going to go back to a double bond. Now if you bring your cursor over the end, the open end of the bond, you notice the hitbox appears. You can just type the letter C on the keyboard. And it adds a carbon with as many hydrogens as necessary to give carbon four bonds. If, say, you don't want two hydrogens, you can click the C again, and it removes a hydrogen, click it again, removes another hydrogen, click it again, back up to two, and so on. So just keep hitting the C until you get as many hydrogens as you wish. Let's leave it as CH. Now I want to put an OH group on, so I'm going to make sure that you hover over the C, not the H, because the bond needs to connect to the carbon, and just drag out and release. This time type the letter O and that gives you hydroxyl group. And if I hit the letter O again while I'm still hovered over the oxygen with the hit box selected, hit O again, it removes the hydrogen so I can toggle that on and off. In this case I want to leave it off and I want to put a methyl group attached to the oxygen so I make an ether. So simply you're still in the bond tool drag outwards, hover over the end, and type the letter C, and we get CH3, which is what we want. So let's continue and draw the structure I have down below here. So I want to attach a chlorine to this carbon and an amino group down here. So take the bond tool, hover over the carbon, wait till you see the hitbox, and then drag outwards. Remember, you got 15 degree bond angle increments. Choose what you think looks about right. Remember, the bond angle will be 120 degrees and release it. Hold the cursor over the end of the bond so the hitbox is showing. 
there's a hot key for chlorine. It's the letter L, just lowercase l, and it puts a chlorine in. With the bond tool still selected, let's put an amino group here. Drag down. With the hit box showing, you can type the letter N on the keyboard. It adds as many hydrogens as necessary to give nitrogen a full valence shell. And we can also add electrons, non-bonded pairs of electrons. And this tool is very neat in know-it-all. So choose the atoms tool group, and you see the non-bonded pair of electrons. So on the chlorine, just make sure that the hit box is selected, then drag and upwards, and you get your first pair. Now, if you feel that these electrons are too close or too far, you can hold the shift key down while you drag and deposit them wherever you decide they should be. Three non-bonded pairs on chlorine, one on nitrogen, and two on oxygen. Again, just make sure that the hitbox is selected. Don't like that one. Let's try again. Straight up. Okay. There. All right. So there's a simple molecule easily drawn. Now we can drag copies of this if you take your selection tool and drag around it. So the whole thing is selected. You can then hold down the control key and drag a copy of it as soon as you see that plus sign. I should tell you that I have instructions for what I am doing in this particular exercise in the notes, page 26 and 27. Here's what I'm doing right now, page 26 and page 27. If you want to use this as a guide, as an introduction, there are extensive instructions on using know-it-all in your notes. This is just the end of the chapter. Let's go back to know-it-all. Okay, I'm going to delete these structures and let's start with something new. So to delete it, I'm just going to, well, a couple ways. I could drag a box around it. Yikes, I got too much. How about if I just click on the structure itself using the selection tool here? And then I hit delete key. Let's get rid of some of these. Delete, delete. Okay, let's draw a cyclohexane ring. So here it is on the main group. Now when you draw this, simply click, but don't release the mouse yet. Just rotate it around. you notice that you can adjust the angle before you release it. Using the selection tool, if you click on the ring, and then click a second time on one of these circles, notice the handles have changed and now they look like a rotation tool and that's what they are. So move the mouse around until you see two curved arrows. Now click and drag. You can rotate the ring to whatever angle you want it to be. Let's put it vertical. It tells me the angle. Notice as I'm rotating it. I'll release it when it gets close to 90. There it is. Okay, so let's take our cyclohexane ring and draw this ether and draw this carboxylate ion. So to drag a copy of it, select it, hold the control key down, and hold the mouse button down until you see a positive sign and draw yourself a copy. You might want to drag another copy to make this carboxylate group. Okay, for the ether, how do we put an atom inside a bond? Well, it's actually very simple. Choose the label tool, just click on the carbon where you want to place it. It's flashing. I'm going to type Shift O, and it's inserted it very nicely. I also want some unsaturation in the ring, so I'll choose my bonding tool. Click once. That's all we need. What happens if you click repeatedly? Let's see. Other side, kind of messed up there. Triple bond, not possible. Single bond. Just keep clicking until you get what you want. And there it is. Okay, so there's our cyclic ether, easy to make. We should put some electrons on that. So that's under the atoms group, non-bonded electrons. I'm holding the shift key down so I can control the distance and the angle at which these non-bonded pairs of electrons are sitting. But even here, it's still a bit difficult to get a hold of them. Try that again. That's a little better. Okay, now this carboxylate group, we're going to take a ring and break the ring and add this to it. So let me just move this over. Now 
nice thing about moving these is that the pairs of electrons stay with it. So we want to choose the eraser tool. Uh, hold it until you see the bond, the hitbox of the bond you want to remove, then click the delete key and only that should be deleted. I want to put some carbons on there. So go back to the main group and I'm going to choose the label tool. Wait till you see the hitbox on the carbon. Capital C or Shift C. Choose the bond tool. And I'm going to drag up and then double bond and I need an oxygen on top so that's simply just hit the O you don't have to hit shift O just O it knows you want a capital and we need an oxygen out here as well so hold your cursor over the end and type the letter O now we don't want the hydrogen so hit O again and we'll do the same on the bottom now I need a carbon here you need to select the label tool click on the carbon until you see the flashing line type the letter C capital C that's for the label tool you have to hit capital C but for the bond tool it'll always put capitals in for you I want a double bond oxygen now that's kinda of strange but let's keep clicking that that fixed it I need an oxygen so with the bond tool still selected hold the cursor over the end of the double bond hit the letter O and still oxygen selected drag outwards and hit the letter O. I'm going to type O again to get rid of the hydrogen and let's put some electrons in there. That's a lot of electrons. Should be three non-bonded pairs of electrons on these negatively charged oxygen atoms. We also want a negative charge on these oxygens, again in the atoms group, uh, plus and minus. This is the smaller of the two negative signs. Hover over the oxygen so the hitbox is selected. Hold down the shift key and you can drag and deposit the negative charge wherever you think it ought to be. About there and about, well, whatever, say there. Now you may think those non-bonded electrons are too small. There is a way to adjust that. Let's go to the selection tool, select our structure, and up here you notice the default was 0.5 points for our lines. Well, that gives us small bonds. It gives us small electrons. If we choose, say, one point, then everything's darkened up, and that perhaps looks a little better. Okay, let's try drawing these. Here's a polymer chain. For that, we can use the chain tool. It's on the bonding tool group right here, chain tool. Just drag outwards, and notice it counts the number of bonds as you drag. Now, if I hold down the shift key as I do that, I can move the cursor up to make longer bonds or move it down to make shorter bonds and it, then when you go past the zero mark it flips the other side. Alright, so whenever you feel it's about right you can release that. Click until you see the dots and you can then move the whole structure. How about this uh, polyethylene abbreviation? How can we do that? Let's get our label tool and we'll type C H2. It's in the formula mode. And now choose the bond tool. I'm going to drag out from the carbon. Now I want this next bond to be kind of long. If I just drag from the carbon, it's pretty stubby and short. Control Z. Control Z is undo. If I, this time I'm going to hold the shift key down. Notice I can drag the bond as long as I want by doing that. That looks better. I'll release it and type the letter C and type it again. I just want CH2. I need another bond. The bonding tool is still active. And drag out, holding the shift key down to control the length. Now I want these square braces around it. This is found under the bonds group right down here. Polymer bracket tool. Try the upper left corner 
and drag to the lower right. When it looks about the right size and height, you can release it. Your cursor is ready to type in the number of repeating groups in the polymer. There's polyethylene with repeating unit length of 100,000. All right, this next structure looks like it's three-dimensional. Let's go back to the main group and get a cyclopentane ring. Now, when I drag on the canvas, this time hold down the shift key and you can control the size as well as the position by rotating. You can control the size by moving the mouse up and down. You can control the angle somewhat by rotating. I see it's still not right, but we'll see if I can fix it. Choose a selection tool, click on the object. Click a second time on one of these circles and I see the rotation tool. Move the cursor until I see a rotation and let's rotate until it looks proper. Now simply select elsewhere. Now I want to squash this ring so it looks like it's lying down. So if I select it with the selection tool active, I can drag one of these handles and disproportionately shrink it, just like you would in any drawing package. So it looks like it's kind of flat. I want to now draw these wedge-shaped bonds coming out of the plane of the page toward us. It's a widening wedge. We'll find these on the bonds tool group right here. I'm going to hold the shift key down so I can control the length. Make sure that you start with your cursor right on the hitbox of the carbon you want to sprout from. So there's going to be a hydrogen. So that will be a hydrogen. Just click the letter H. I'll come down using the shift key again. And that'll be a chlorine. So with the hitbox selected, hit the letter L. On the left side, same deal. Shift, drag, put another chlorine, L, letter L. And in the bottom left, I want a bromine, so shift and drag, a shorter bond. And this time, the letter B is the hot key for bromine. So there's a three-dimensional looking molecule. Next, I want to show you how to draw a chemical reaction in know-it-all. So in the chem window application, you can't actually draw in the reaction arrows or the mechanistic arrows. All you can do is draw the structures and then transfer them into the other application, transfer them into reported. So first, let's draw this, and then I'll have you transfer it and show you how that's done. So I'll draw it with you here if you want to follow. We had the carboxylate ion. Let's draw a hydronium ion. Choose the label tool. Click on the canvas. Shift O. Choose the bond tool. You can hold the shift key down to control the length of the hydrogens. Hot key for hydrogen is H. I want hydronium ion. There's three hydrogens. I'll need one pair of electrons. That'll be on the atom tool group. Hold the shift key down to control the distance and the position of the electron pair. I need a plus sign. Hydronium is positively charged. OK, so I can drag a copy of this. Just click on it, hold it for a second, hold down the control key and drag a copy. You'll need to keep these fairly tight to each other. There's limited room on the reported, on the reported canvas. In this reaction, hydronium ion protonates the carboxylates. So we need two hydronium ions, each protonating the two carboxylate groups, producing a dicarboxylic acid and two water molecules. So the easiest way to do this is drag a copy and adjust the copies. Let's get a copy of the carboxylate. Hold down the control key, 
click and hold the mouse until you see the plus sign and drag a copy. Keep it fairly close because there is limited room. Also we need a water molecule so let's start with hydronium and we'll alter it. Okay. I will use the eraser tool to get rid of one pair of electrons and the negative charge from the carboxylates. I'll need to put another hydrogen atom on each of these. There it is. I hold down the shift key to control the length of it. Keep it fairly tight. I can get rid of one of these hydrogen ions on the hydronium and the bond and the plus sign and I need one more pair of electrons and that's on the atoms tool group. Drag a pair of electrons uh, somewhere there. It's not bad. Okay, so I need another water molecule. I can simply drag a copy of this selected control key, press and hold to see the plus sign. All right, so those are our products. That's all we can really do in chem window. We have to now transfer this to report it to actually finish the chemical reaction equation. All right, so we're going to select this material only. Transfer to up here, transfer to report it. So don't open report it, but rather transfer to report it. And here it's pulled in to report it. And I already have created the final work here so you can see what we're trying to do. So let's finish this up. Notice that this is all grouped. I can't really move it or ungroup it. If I decide that I want to change something at this point, you can double click and that opens a window that's now within chem window and actually make a change. Say I could do something like this, move it around. Um, otherwise, go back to chem window and make the changes you want, then bring it forward. Clicking outside the box puts me back and report it. I want to put in the reaction arrows. So under the main group, we see the Bezier tool. Draw an arrow from the electron donor, the nucleophile, to the electron acceptor. Now I want to draw from the bond to the oxygen. If it's going the wrong direction, bring it back to the beginning, and it generally, and the start again usually flips around. Now, I want to make it much tighter, so if you hover over one of these hitboxes, you can drag and move those arrows in any shape you want. Be the same thing here. The oxygen donates a pair of electrons to the hydrogen ion. I just select it and get one of those hitboxes. Notice the arrowhead changed to a half arrow. Um, that's for one electron transfer. Just keep clicking it until you see the double arrowhead return. There it is. Okay, so that's the reaction mechanism. I need a reaction arrow. That would be here. And that's pretty much it. Okay, we want to label this. Um, it's the text tool here. This is commonly called a dip eight, which is easier to write. It would be disodium adipate or dipotassium adipate or some salt like that. This is hexane dioic acid. The only space is between the ic and the acid. And of course we have hydronium and water. So that's how we draw a reaction mechanism using know-it-all. Report it also has an orbital tools group here. For example, this would be, I'm just dragging on the canvas. If I hold the shift key down, I should be able to adjust the size. This is a DZ squared orbital. It is selected and the default color is white, but I could change that to some other color. Report it has a clip art group. These are chemical engineering symbols which are of interest, but I'm going to cancel that. Of more interest is the lab glass group. We can assemble some glassware for lab reports here. Let's find a round bottom flask and a condenser. After a bit of hunting, here's a small RB flask and simply click OK. 
going to paste the copy on the canvas and you can move it and resize it as you wish. I want to get a condenser to add to this. Let's hunt for a West condenser. After some more searching, I finally found a West condenser. Say OK. And let's see if we can group these. So I put my West condenser, better shrink it a bit. And we'll make a reflux assembly. Here in the Edit Tool group, I can work with objects. If I select the condenser, I can choose to send it to the back. Notice, notice the flask is now in front of the condenser. I could bring the condenser forward or back. If I want to group these two objects so they don't come apart, this is group here, and now it moves as one object. and other drawing tools such as rotate and so on. Know-it-all will also generate a 3D view of a molecule which is kind of a neat feature. So if you have a molecule that you drew before, I kept this one, with or without the non-bonded electrons, they won't show in the 3D molecule. Well, just make sure you select the molecule that you want to see the 3D view of. When it's selected, choose Transfer to 3D View It. Now that doesn't look like the proper structure. We're in 3D View It right now, so here. So we want to go Compute 3D Structure, and that corrects all the bond angles and bond lengths. We'd like to be able to rotate this, so several tools up here Orbit XY is probably the neatest one. We can orbit it in several dimensions at the same time. We can have the atoms labeled. If you choose View, Atom Symbols, just do it twice if necessary. There they are. There's chlorine, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, carbons. The neat thing about BioRad is the 3D molecules show double bonds and triple bonds. We can change the size of this with the magnifier. We can translate the molecule, orbit on the z-axis, any, any of those renderings. Now there's more than one view. We're currently in the ball and stick view. If you go to the stick view, it just shows sticks. This is the wireframe view. This is a space filling view. Good idea for stereochemistry. Let's say you wanted to put this in a lab report. You probably don't want the black background color here under Edit Preferences. Uh, the background color is black. I could change that to white and say Apply and OK. Now I could use my snipping tool, for example and get a copy of that, like so. And I could paste that. I could save it as a JPEG or whatever you wanted to do with it. Black seems to have disappeared. We'll go with uh, dark gray. In any case, you can also select the colors you want for the various atoms and the radii. But these defaults are really good. And say OK. BioRed will also create a 3D animation of the molecule rocking or spinning. You can either take the molecule from 3D view it or you can take it directly from chem windows it makes no difference I'll go back to chem windows and we select our molecule and choose this time to transfer to SIMAPS and now SIMAPS well again we're going to correct the structure so compute 3D structure and would you like to recompute okay I'll do it again Let's uh, change the size, make it a little bit bigger. And we'd like to put our atom symbols back in. Let's view atom labels. I want to have this rock or spin around which axis? So here under view, coordinate axes. Orbit XY. 
There they are. If you hover your cursor over them, this is the z-axis, this is the x-axis, and then this would be the y-axis. Why don't we have it spin around the x-axis? I'm going to get rid of these axes. Unselect coordinate axes. Okay, we're going to choose to make a. We're going to make a movie. You can either spin or rock about. We said the x-axis. Now the default is to rock. I'd like a spin, and this is frames per second. 24 frames per second is kind of minimum rate, so it doesn't look too jerky. Length of the movie: five or ten seconds. You can select the size of the movie if you wish. Let's say we made it 400 by 400, a little bit bigger. 400 by 400 pixels. Now, let's choose advanced. On some computers, depending what codecs you have, you may have more options here. Uh, these are grayed out right now, but in previous versions we could select different codecs to uh, render this in. I'll have to go with the only default I have right now and say OK. When you're all set, click OK. It's going to ask you for a location where you're going to place this. I'll put it on my desktop and give it a name. I'll just say animation. Uh, the file extension is an AVI by default and say save. Now it'll render it and then it'll run it in whatever your default viewer is. Had you chosen more frames per second, it would be a little less jerky, but the file size would be bigger. This would be a nice feature, for example, perhaps in a PowerPoint presentation that you're giving to the class about a particular structure or compound you're discussing. When you're done, simply close that. And let's go back to Chem Windows. On pages 15 through 27, in the course notes, you have instructions for using BioRad Know-It-All. There's a brief description of how to use Chem Windows, report it, 3D view it, SIM apps for 3D animations, and even the IR analyzer. Here on page 19, I have a list of the hotkeys that are built into Chem Windows. B for bromine, L for chlorine, F for fluorine, I for iodine, O for oxygen, S for sulfur, N for nitrogen, R for an alkyl group, H for hydrogen, P for phosphorus, and C for carbon. So whenever you use one of these hotkeys, it will uh, automatically attach as many hydrogens as necessary to complete the valence shell, at least in the case of oxygen, sulfur, nitrogen, and phosphorus and carbon. Any other chemical symbols that need to be included can simply be typed in from the keyboard. BioRad Know-It-All does not have a very steep learning curve. You can pick it up relatively quickly. There are some other applications in BioRed Know-It-All, particularly spectroscopy applications, but I will leave that to you to explore in some of your later organic courses. I hope what I've given you today is enough to get you started drawing and using BioRed Know-It-All.